In our monthly checkup today, we are talking about rabies. We often think of rabies and pets, but wild animals are the source of the vast majority of rabies cases. Here to tell us about the risks of this ancient disease and what we need to know about it is Dr. Benjamin Chan, the state epidemiologist. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for having so, me. So, Dr. Chan, first of all, how big of a problem is this really in New Hampshire right now? Yeah, so just to start off, rabies is a viral disease that can infect humans, um, or for that matter, any mammal. Uh, it's transmitted to humans through the bite of an infected animal. It's something that happens worldwide. Um, in developing countries uh, where pets and dogs are not vaccinated, the majority of human cases of rabies occur through dog bites. In the United States and other places where we have vaccines um, for our pets, most of the human cases of rabies comes through the bite of, a, an, of an infected animal. Uh, it's estimated that worldwide uh, there's 50 to 100,000 human uh, deaths every year from rabies. In New Hampshire, we have not had a case of rabies since 1996, so it's not that common in humans. We do investigate uh, animal cases of rabies, however, and every year we have 20 to 30 cases of uh, rabies in animals. Usually those are bats, uh, raccoons, skunks, foxes. What do we need to know about the disease itself? It apparently moves through the nervous system, essentially. Uh, that's correct, and, and actually, it actually tends to be a very serious disease once you develop symptoms. Uh, it can infect the central nervous system, cause brain swelling, what we call encephalitis, and ultimately if, if people develop symptoms, usually it's fatal. Um, early signs can be very nonspecific, like any viral infection, people can have fever, headaches, not feeling well. Uh, later on in the course of the disease, they can develop mental status changes, confusion, agitation, uh, nerve problems, even paralysis, and then eventually people go into a coma and end up passing away. Um, there is a period of time, though, between when somebody gets bitten um, and when the virus travels up the nervous system into the brain and spinal cord, when there can be preventative measures taken. People can go and get what we call post-exposure prophylaxis, which is where um, people are given rabies antibodies, and they're also vaccinated so that their body develops its own antibodies against the infection to prevent disease from developing. And what's the most important thing someone can do to keep themselves safe? Yeah, again, so rabies is mainly transmitted through bites, so if, you, if somebody gets bitten, they need to wash that area very thoroughly or flush their you know, eyes or mucous membranes uh, and then call their healthcare provider so they can receive post-exposure prophylaxis. Um, people should also call their doctors if by chance they wake up and find a bat in their room. You know, bats, uh, it's been some individuals like very young and they're very old, uh, could potentially transmit rabies and not, people may not necessarily know that they were bitten. And then it's very important for people to get vaccinated, uh, excuse me, vaccinate their pets, excuse yeah. me, um, and, and livestock as well to prevent, to, pre to prevent rabies. All right, Dr. Benjamin Chan, thanks for the information. My pleasure, thank Much you. Appreciate it.